Welcome back. Um, we're going to use Marmoset to render out our images in real time. Marmoset is the icon at the very bottom of the screen and you just click on it and it will open up. Um, you will have to go jump through a couple hoops um, so what you're going to need to do is go ahead and uh, type in Marmoset tool bag. If you go back you can see this is what I typed in Marmoset tool bag when you do that, it'll come up with Toolbag Marmoset. Click on that. Once you open this, you can go into Try and Buy. And you can download a full featured 30 day trial is included. So, whatever, whichever one you would like to use, uh, this is the Windows. We've got minimum requirements here. Um, I usually ignore those and download it anyway and then you will double click on it and it will want you to uh, register it um, use your JCC uh, student email account and it will send you an email saying telling you what else you can do and sometimes it activates it right on the spot so with that done you can now use it so to use Marmoset Toolbag you'll have to go in to uh, file and import mesh. So follow follow my instructions on saving out your um, OBJ out of Maya, your low poly, and then we'll need to import that. So I, I'm going to go ahead and click on Dice Low Poly and open that up. And when I do that, you can rotate in here. You can also drag and drop the OBJ into the viewport. That'll work as well. Alright, so if you, hold, if you hold down the Alt key and your left mouse button, you'll be able to rotate around the scene. Okay? And you can uh, zoom in and out with your middle mouse button. Okay, the Alt key lets you rotate. And you can zoom in and out. And the Alt and uh, middle mouse button will less also let you move around. It's basically like Maya. Okay? All right, so it's really nice. So it's got the Maya controls of Alt and left mouse button rotating, Alt and hold down the middle mouse button move, and then zooming in and out with the scroll, middle mouse button scroll. Okay, so let me take you through what I want you to do. And you can watch this video over and over again with every object. You'll have to do this with every object that you create in Andy 150. So this video will be used over and over and over again. So if you get lost, you can always watch the video. All right, so I'm going to click on Sky. We're under Scene. Um, and there are very few tabs that you can select. So click on Scene. And here's our scene. I want you to click on the Sky tab up here at the top. And then I want you to scroll down to Presets. Okay? This preset's too warm. You can see that it pulls the warmness from this image. So the lighting is using this image as an HDR, high dynamic range image. So it will pull all the reds and the browns and all that stuff. So we will want to use a very neutral um, HDR IM Im image. So I'm going to click on indoor fluorescence and you can see that it's a very flat gray image and that's what we want to use. So Every time that you um, actually, uh, you know, render these these images out, um, you're going to need to use the indoor fluorescence. Okay, all right, that works the best. Because if you look at the rest of these, like sunset, that's way too purple. Uh, the church scene, uh, you know, that's actually pretty nice, but it's got a lot of greens in it. Um, that's just too dark. So you can go through them and look at them, and, and you probably think they look really good, but um, I'm the one that's grading this stuff, so I want you to use indoor fluorescence, okay? All right, so click on Done. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take you through what you need to do. Um, right now, there is a default uh, added to this object, and we're going to go ahead and use that default. So... Um, I'm going to find my uh, maps. Okay, so um, for the normal map, I'm going to click, make sure the surface is, uh, just click on the plus sign 
and double click on this and this will let me go in here and find my uh, maps. So I'm going to go in and find my maps, put everything under source images so I should be, should be easy to find. And we're going to start with the normal map. So I'm going to find dice normal, finished normals, and we'll go ahead and open that up. And that should, uh, we can see that the map is showing up. That looks really good. Okay, awesome. Cool. So, basically, we'll go ahead. It's harder to see the top because it's really, really bright. Okay, that's from the fluorescent lights up here, and I'll we'll talk about that. So, we can darken the brightness down up here because we still have the sky open. Under brightness, just lower that a little bit so you can see your dice a little bit better. Okay? So, that that's, that's great. So, we've We've got a nice image here so far. So the next thing we're going to do is um, the specular map. So with the normal map selected, this is uh, something that we want to show um, in uh, to show off in our um, in our image, our construction sheet. So we need to actually uh, take a shot of this. Um, if you hold this, if you just type touch the space bar you can see the whole view okay so before we move on and add more things um, this is one of the uh, images we want to see we want to see the object without um, basically without anything and wireframe on it but we'll, we'll hit that a little bit later so I'm going to kind of go back and forth here so here's our first one normal map we need to get a, a screenshot of that so if I go into capture um, I can see that I can do an image uh, hit F11 um, or hit F10 or do a tur turntable and all that stuff, but we're going to just do F11. Um, so I'm going to click on this image right here and just hit F11 and that will actually place it on the desktop and I can rename it and use it. But I really don't want the background in there. So I'm going to click on sky and I am going to go to uh, mode, okay. I click on mode and go to color. There we go. And I want to have a color that's fairly dark. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in RGB at 50, 50, and 50. And that'll give me a nice, just plain gray, dark gray. I'm going to click OK. All right, so that's perfect so again how I did that went to mode color went to color and then changed the R G B to 50 50 50 click OK and that's going to give us a nice basis I'm going to, have to tap the space bar and then hit F11 there we go so now we've got a nice image of just the smooth shade with normal map on it it looks good and I can see all three views the front the side and the top that's a nice perspective. Okay, so with the space bar again, the space bar will let you see your tabs and all your all the interface attributes. And to hit the space bar, you can get a nice clean, and you can move this around and rotate a little bit to kind of get it the way you want it. Okay, so hit the space bar again, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our specular map. So I'm going to click on that and go into my spec map dice specular targa and open and so now you can see my nice specular on this okay so I'm gonna face it towards the light okay like we had it before and I am going to hit F11 there we go so there's my specular map and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have all of them together. So I need my albedo map, which is the color map. I'll click on that. And we'll click on my texture. And that's that's not the right one. My color. PS. There it is. Dice color texture. And I click open. And there it is. So there's my entire map with a specular map on it. Okay. There we go. hit the space bar kinda get a nice view of that okay now with with the specular we, we kinda need to 
show off that specular, I mean the specularity. So I'm going to get it just just right here. Seems a little dark. Now if I turn the brightness up on this with the with the uh, with the slider, brighten that image up. I I can certainly do that. Okay, and one of the things I I do would like to do is maybe add another light. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit with that image, and I'm going to show you how to add a light. So let's go into uh, scene, new light, move that out a little bit, and this light's going to be kind of nice because it's going to uh, show off some things okay and with that light selected or highlighted I can turn on the brightness turn up the brightness if I want to and turn up the distance that it affects so I'm going to move that away a little bit more attenuation curve and distance and kind of mess with that until I get it just the way I want to and of course my spot angle, I can mess with that, Sh spot sharpness, and vignette. Okay, so I'm going to move that up and down. You can see that it's kind of, and if I move it this way, you can see how it affects the, the, um, the object or image itself. So you just kind of have to mess with it a little bit. You can click on uh, click shadows or cast shadows and sometimes just you know if I turn the brightness all the way off you can see that it kinda just adds a nice it just kinda adds it makes the object pop out a little bit more and um, I can hit control D and move the light over on this side as well and it just kinda gives it just a nicer feel makes it makes it pop a little better and again I can turn the distance on or up or down brightness here we go and just kind of place it what makes the best it looks the best it's kind of cool you can see that reflection off that specular map it's kind of fun so I'm just going to kind of move it over a little bit so I can get a nice reflection on the side I don't want it to be too too much okay when you're done click off and let's zoom back in again move that around zoom it in so it fills the whole entire page the spacebar make sure I'm, I'm centered okay and then hit the F11 key or excuse me F yeah I think it's F11 yeah F11 okay so now what I need to do I'm going to kind of go back and I'm going to show you how to get rid of some of this stuff. So, um, we have a, a, a default uh, image, but we need to show. Um, so, if we decide I made a mistake here, I made a mistake here, and then I made a mistake here, and I just have this 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 default surface, and it gives us kind of a chrome uh, look, and that's not necessarily what we want. So it doesn't really go back to the normal. The the so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on a new material, and just click on it and place it over top, and that kind of puts us back where we were. Okay. Now the lights we don't need anymore. So I'm going to click on those up here and delete those. So we will get kind of more of a, a flat surface. And then what we're going to do now is. Uh, we're going to click on the on the uh, render, and we're going to click on wireframe. So wireframe allows us to see the wireframe over the top of the low poly. And what this does is I'm going to make that really super thick. I'm not even sure if we can type in two. If I can, I will. Um, so it makes it really thick. And the color of this should be just pitch black. Okay. Click OK. And... Um, occlusion strength, we can look at that, but we're going to keep that off. Um, refractive in index, I'm not worried about that, but that's the only thing we have to do with the wireframe. So we need a picture, an image of that, so click off the spacebar, hit F11, and there we go. That's all we need to do 
for Marmoset. So that's it, and we'll see you next time.